It's a Saturday afternoon, and we're tinkering on the old Ford. Welcome back, everybody. David Shepard here, and gonna show you guys. Uh, I don't think this truck's been on the channel before, so I'm gonna show you guys our old 1968 Ford F250 here. It has been sitting for quite a while, so I'm gonna show you guys my process for getting an old vehicle running, especially old carbureted vehicle, and uh, yeah, get that nice old start, cold start on video, and also just give you guys a nice full walk around, show you guys this truck. It's I gotta pull it out of this hole here, um, but it's actually pretty straight, original paint. So I'm gonna show you guys the truck, show you guys the cold start, old start, uh, all right after a word of scripture. So today I wanna share Luke 636, which says, be merciful, as your heavenly father is merciful. So just a quick reminder, super short verse, but really powerful. You know, if we all have a little mercy on one another, imagine what a difference that might make. You know, I'm just as guilty as the next guy when somebody cuts me off in traffic or does something kind of silly. I want to jump on them, honk the horn, whatever it might be. But we got to remember, you know, I've done stupid things. We've all done stupid things. So just a reminder, just a call for us to all to be merciful to one another. And uh, I got to remind myself of that as much as the next guy. So thanks for listening, guys. Now I'm going to show you this, like I said, 1968 F-250. So it is a three-quarter ton, eight lug axles, but two-wheel drive. And this one's a four-sped. Interior is pretty rough. It's all there, but you know, seats blown out, dash is cracked. Um, but the rest of the truck, exterior-wise, pretty straight body. Like I said, original paint. And I think uh, if we have time, I think we're gonna go ahead and try to clean this paint up today a little bit too, because you could see she's got some life left in her. So four speed with the 352 and um, it's got some uh, little hot rod parts on her you can see some long tube headers down there and uh, it's got got the XL ignition and a uh, Holly double pumper on the old girl so some chrome valve covers yeah you know that's how you know it's fast but um, yeah, hasn't run in a while. It's been sitting, unfortunately, it's been parked under this tree, which uh, I know, I know, guys. I hate when I see people. I, what, do you, what are people thinking? Park it under a tree so the sun and the rain doesn't hit it? No, all those leaves, all those twigs, all that debris falls down and that rots and holds moisture. So don't be parking these classics under trees. But our storage yard is pretty plumb full here. Broken dodges and just you know, all the units, all the parking spots are full. So this is what we got. And um, it's been sitting here for a minute. So I did get uh, did get the old battery charged up and I'm gonna go ahead and prime the carburetor. And um, that's about it. I know this one rolls over. I'll probably check the oil just for good measure, but otherwise just get some gas in the carb. And what I like to do is use some sea foam. When this, car, when this carb's been sitting, you know, let's see, at least six months, and it does have ethanol fuel in it, um, and you really only get about three months before that fuel starts to wreak havoc on carburetors. So what I like to do is use a little sea foam, the old motor treatment, the uh, Italian tune-up, some might call it. So that's my juice of choice. And what I like to do is mix it up with some gasoline so it's not just all straight sea foam all at once, sea foam. And take a nice bottle that, you know, kind of has some squeeze to it and drill a little hole in the cap. And then, you know, you don't need the fancy squirter bottles. And then it allows you to just squeeze this as needed and where needed, especially down the float bowl vents, double pumper, so we got two of them on this, and um, really, really is going to help clean up that carb. You know, if it's only been sitting six months or something like that, it might not be so bad where I got to pull that thing apart and go through cleaning jets and all that. So I'm hoping we could cheat a little bit. Like I said, Saturday, it's our own truck. We're kind of just screwing around. So let's hope the sea foam comes through for us today. I'm going to mix it up with some fresh gas and. Um, yeah, I'll mix up my cocktail and get back with you guys. Okay, so we got our cocktail mixed up here. That is not lemonade, folks. So let's go ahead and bring her over here. And 
when these have been sitting especially with the ethanol fuel whatever fuel is in your float bowls when it's been sitting this long anyway it's going to evaporate some of it leaks back down um, especially with the mechanical fuel pump set up like this has and you know the ethanol fuel it's it's 20 percent ethanol or whatever you might have in your area it's it's alcohol based so it evaporates quicker and it also boils quicker so um, these old rigs really don't like the ethanol they gum up the carbs they dry out the fuel bowls and they could also cause vapor lock because uh, alcohol has a lower boiling point so it needs less temperature to get that fuel to boil and cause vapor lock issues but anyway that's what we have nowadays so we're gonna go ahead and uh, fill those float bowls through the vent tubes let's see if I could get it anywhere close while filming Let's go ahead and get this back one. Whoops. Okay, so that should have filled up our fuel bowls or at least gotten some in there. And obviously some of that just went right down the throat of the carburetor as well. So it's probably gonna light right off. If anything, this might be a little flooded out, but we'll find out in a second here. So. Um, I'm actually not even going to pump it because we're not going to have any fuel squirt yet. And, uh, okay, let's give it, give it a little crank on the key here. And, uh, oh. All right, guys. I'm not going to show you the hidden key spot. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's get her in the neutralis. Here we go. Seems flooded. A little too much fuel. So let's hold her wide open a sec and. Yep. A little flooded from dripping too much down the throat of the car, but hey, now she's idling. Idling fairly smooth, actually. I should probably check the oil. Did not do that yet, like I said I was going to, um, but we'll get just a little bit of temperature in it and then I'll check that. But boy, she's idling. So there you have it. Definitely uh, get some kind of squirt bottle set up so you could get gas down, <laughs> down those vent tubes, those float bowl vent tubes, and try to fill the bowl as much as you can. Of course, just sprinkling a little fuel down the throat of the car will get it to light off initially, and you can kind of bottle feed it, just drip, drip gas in there to keep it running at first. But you saw how easily it is to flood these out by just pouring gas down there. And then also, you know, you don't want to pool too much in the cylinders there um, because with the engine off, you're only going to get fuel in the cylinders that are on the intake stroke or have the intake valves open. So don't be just pouring a bunch of fuel down there. You saw how easy it is to flood it out. Um, but now I'm going to keep, keep bottle feeding this thing with our seafoam cocktail. And honestly, I'm thinking it won't be won't take too much to get this thing to clean up. All right, still bone cold, but let's see if we got any accelerator pump. Nope, no sir, she didn't like that. No, so carb definitely needs some uh, some tuning, Italian or otherwise. So I'm gonna get to that and uh, keep feeding this thing some sea foam, and I'll get you guys back out here. All right, so got her idling pretty well now. Seems like this thing is cleaning up a little bit. Still don't have much accelerator pump. As you could see, but that's okay. We're going to keep running her, see, see if that brings it back. Otherwise, hey, I'll be digging into that holly sooner or later. But I'm going to move on to kind of cleaning this thing up. I want you guys want you guys to be here for the first cleanup of this thing and see how this old old original paint comes back. I mean, this is a Colorado truck here in western Colorado where you know, we do get the snow and some moisture through the winter, but we don't um they don't salt the roads here. Thankfully, they do not use salt on the roads. They do use magnesium chloride, which eh, still takes its toll on stuff, but that's that's more of a modern thing they've been doing and uh, thankfully no salt and um, it's just really 
dry, arid place here in western on the western slope anyway. So not a lot of rust on this truck at all, and the original paint has held up. So like I said before, we're going to go ahead and just give her a little soap scrub. I'm not going to uh, buff for nothing today, but we're going to clean up the exterior and show you guys what it looks like. And also, <laughs> yeah, the interior needs some love, but unfortunately it had one of those... Uh, one of those old school fibrous seat covers on it and that thing just disintegrated to the point where oof, there's that fine dust. I wonder if you guys can see there's that yeah <coughs> that fine dust that just it gets all over you every time you sit in this truck and even it gets it down in your lungs and I'm telling you guys it ain't good. So <coughs> I'm gonna uh I'm gonna throw all this stuff away they had some pillows and blankets covering that thing up and it just smelled like a damp nursing home inside this place. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the inside as best I can and uh, then I'll probably pull this thing out of the hole and uh, give you guys a good walk around pre-clean and then also uh, hopefully if we got time we'll give her a scrub and show you all what it looks like. Came up with a halfway decent idea here, I think. Someone gave me this old, you guys remember these old air caddies? These were kind of cool. I mean, hey, I know everybody's got portable compressors now, but I carry the little, uh, you know, cordless air compressor that I could refill this thing. And um, somebody gave me this thing for free, and I went ahead and plumbed up a new hose on her. And what do you know? Now she's, we pumped her up to 100 PSI. And she's holding steady. Actually increased a little here in the, when it was sitting in the sun. So, hey, I think she's airtight now. And what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and be able to stand back and blow all that fiber out of the interior. So I'm going to do that, clean that thing up just enough to be able to sit in there and be able to breathe. And uh, then we'll continue cleaning. All right, we threw the air cleaner back on there. I'm going to put a bag over that, plastic bag, before I start washing down under hood and check this out hey we blew out the interior and got a custom seat cover look at that huh beautiful custom fitment <laughs> anyway i'll be able to jump in this thing without getting all fibrous and um go ahead and clean this thing up and we also got some stuff to degrease under the hood super clean awesome products and super clean is actually a sponsor of my little channel here so Hey, try it out if you want to. I like the stuff. It's pretty affordable as far as most degreasers go and seems to work pretty well. So give it a try. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to squirt some down under the hood. I forgot to mention this, but these valve covers were leaking and all the bolts on both sides were hand tight. So went ahead and tweaked them down a little bit. I'm going to spray some degreaser and just gently wash up under the hood here and also give her a wash in on the outside and uh, show y'all what it looks like. Okay, so you guys know how it goes working on old cars. You know, you know how it goes. You know how life goes. Finally got all ready to clean this thing up. Air cleaner back on. We had our super clean in there. Even our uh, plastic bag to cover the intake custom seat cover. And uh, we were all ready to go. And of course, the battery was dead so not sure why I did I don't think I mentioned this but I did check this sucker was charging had 14.3 volts when running so not sure what happened I might have left the key on when I was cleaning all out but anyway got her hooked up to the old service truck and finally ready to pull this thing out so let's see what happens Okay, so I really did want to show you guys this thing all cleaned up, but I think I've actually got to call it for the night. Um, while I was waiting for the old battery to charge up, had the Chevy run in here, um, I decided to go ahead and check the oil, like I said I was going to do five times today, and forgot every time. And when I did that, pulled the old dipstick out, and let's see if you could see how over full that oil is so you give it the old smell test and it just smells like old gas way over full smells like old gas oops drop that in the dirt this is what happens when i get tired and uh things plans just fall apart i'm sure you all know how that goes but um 
check the oil over full smells like gas way thinned out so if you guys know old cars that tells me that our mechanical fuel pump down here the diaphragm is probably shot another another problem with ethanol fuel that alcohol likes to dry out those rubber parts just like in your carburetor the mechanical fuel pump um, has that big rubber diaphragm and when the ethanol just sits in there over time like this truck was sitting eats away at that diaphragm and the seals in your mechanical pump and now we've got gasoline being pumped into the crankcase into the oil so I'm pretty certain that's what happened here um, I mean yeah you guys saw me drip some fuel down down the carb directly into the engine but a handful of drops is not enough to add that much uh, to the dipstick there so we got a bunch of gas in the oil not good I really don't want to run it like that um, even a little bit so I apologize but we're not gonna get uh, the first cleanup on this thing so guess that gives you guys an excuse to come back and see how the original paint cleans up on this old Ford uh, we will get her going we'll come back with a charged battery um, I'll probably grab a new mechanical fuel pump swap well boy I don't know maybe uh, maybe we'll just run electric fuel pump on this not sure but you can rest assured we'll come back we'll get this thing fired up tuned up and cleaned up and we'll we'll show you guys show you guys the results so hope you're excited for that i know i'm looking forward to it it's getting late today and that's just that's how it goes but hey praise god we made some headway we got the inside cleaned out um and you know we just got this thing fired up again it's been sitting for too long and i just got busy and and didn't get back to this thing so we're gonna give the 68 ford some more love hope you guys will stick around for that and i hope that you'll uh you'll be encouraged and just reminded like i was today to be merciful to those around us you know we're all humans we're all created in the image of god and we're called to be merciful to one another so thanks for listening guys thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel if you like this stuff at all and want to come back and see more of the ford and other uh automotive content as well so Praise God. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.